Hi, everyone. Um, first, uh, thank you to the organizers for uh, giving me this opportunity to present the work um, on network-based stratification of tumor mutations. Um, I'm a student in a triadicus group, and I've just realized that I'm keeping all of you from lunch, so I'll try to keep it interesting and to the point. Um, let's start. Um, we've discussed at length stratification, um, so if I just to say one word, uh, it is clear it is important, as, as all of you have uh, uh, tried to do it in uh, various forms. Um, we feel it's a, um, a very major milestone on the way for patient tailored treatment. Um, and there have been many uh, successful attempts. We've seen uh, a few today, and I'll uh, remind us um, some of the original work by Verhak, who just preceded me, um, where they've uh, subtyped uh, glioblastoma into four types, um, um, I guess five types now, um, where some of these subtypes have um, significant association with survival. Um, uh, in, in, uh, in other cases, however, uh, for example, ovarian cancer, um, the subtypes that were uh, defined by expression were not as successful as, at recapitulating um, a clinical phenotype. Um, and we were asking ourselves, um, um, there there's, remains this um, type of data which, which might harbor um, uh, information for subtyping that haven't been um, used uh, yet, uh, which is somatic mutations. Um, and then the question arises, why are somatic mutations difficult, or why haven't they been used before uh, for subtyping? And, and somebody uh, already today on this podium sort of mentioned that it's, it's just there, there's not enough of them there. It's a very sparse data type. Um, here I just uh, plotted the patient by mutation matrix just for chromosome 17. And really the only feature that is apparent is this uh, TP53 mutation, which is uh, in uh, the majority of the ovarian cancer cohort. This is just for ovarian cancer here. Um, and if you were to quantify this a bit more carefully, um, here I show in a histogram um, on the bottom, a histogram of the columns of this matrix, so basically uh, the frequency of, of uh, um, mutations for each patient, and here um, basically a histogram of the rows, and, and, and as we can see, most mutations occur in a very small fraction of the patients. Um, and it is, it, we, could, we could sort of discount these as passengers, um, However, um, in, in some sense, these might be, for that specific patient, very important mutations. Um, so we were sort of curious. Um, my lab does a lot of stuff with, with, uh, from a network perspective. Um, and we were curious whether it was possible to basically go from um, the, the clustering we see above, the, the stratification, which is sort of not very meaningful, um, use uh, networks to sort of provide something that's more meaningful. Uh, and we proposed. Um, a network-based stratification approach, which is uh, based on consensus clustering. Um, we start, as in consensus clustering, with a, a bootstrap um, initialization of the data. So we draw out a sample. Um, next, we apply a network smoothing um, step, which is basically starting from um, individual mutations. We propagate them onto a network. And I will expand upon this um, further in a moment. Um, on these propagated features, we next apply a network clustering approach, which is basically an NMF with an added regularization layer for a network. Um, and for anybody not familiar with NMF, you should just think about uh, fancier k-means. Um, so we basically do um, um, a fancier k-means with a network. Uh, finally, when we aggregate the results, we get something that actually seems to contain information, um, as opposed to um, the same uh, um, the same data you apply when we apply consensus clustering um, NMF out of the box. Um, so an intuition for network smoothing or why we think this captures something that makes sense, um, here we see sort of two uh, uh, virtual genotypes, genotype A and genotype B. Um, and if you could see at the bottom here, they're very sparse, just have a few ones, mostly zeros, and very, very few, very, very uh, little overlap between the two genotypes. Um, through network propagation, we are able to smooth across the network, basically allowing um, influence from the individual mutations to seep to its network neighborhoods, uh, forming a much denser vector that is now um, has a lot more to compare between uh, these two genotypes. Um, basically, at the end, forming these, these areas of overlap between these individual genotypes. Uh, we start by uh, testing this out in simulation, and we formed a, a simple simulation framework. Um, what we varied, the variables we varied are um, the size of the um, pathway that we believe is, is uh, implicated in cancer or the amount of, of pathway information that, that is tied to the cancer. Um, and on the bottom is the frequency of drivers, so how much of the, the mutations are part of the background and how much are part of the, the cancer 
uh, drivers. Um, and when we compare between these two approaches without smoothing and when we use our network-based approach, we could see that without the smoothing, if, if the mutations are very, very common um, and the pathways are small, we are able um, to basically capture using standard methods. However, um, when we use a network-based approach, we could push this um, area of, of infor informative clustering much further into the space. Um, and we actually believe that the, 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 the real, real cancer um, lies somewhere in this space. Um, when we apply this to a random network um, as a sanity uh, check, we, we sort of see a degradation in, in signal, which we found very encouraging. Um, of course, I would not come here if we only had results on simulation. Um, we apply this to the TCG ovarian cancer, which I've already mentioned had sort of um, not quite as interesting um, association uh, with, with biological for the subtyping. Um, results. And, and here you see the conventional stratification, which really is not interesting. You get a monolithic cluster and, and something that looks like a few outliers. When we apply our approach, you get something that really looks like a meaningful signal. Uh, the question is, is it biological? Um, and I'd like to argue that it is. Here I plot the association of patient survival um, with the number of clusters. So we say, see that um, the y-axis here is the survival log likelihood ratio. Uh, so uh, higher is better. Um, and we see that for uh, quite a number of um, uh, cluster numbers, um, we could basically get um, what is significant association with survival um, compared to either a permuted or the standard NMF. Um, if we drill down to um, uh, four subtypes, which we find uh, reasonable both in terms of um, uh, the, the, the association result and due to other intrinsic measures of uh, clustering performance. Uh, we can see here that there are four subtypes where there's one subtype that actually performs much worse than the rest um, in terms of mean survival. And this is also recapitulated when we look at the probability of platinum resistance. So the acquiring of platinum resistance seems to, be, uh, seems to possibly be an event driving this result. Um, if we compare to other data types, which we've um, uh, thankfully uh, could uh, download from the firehose, um, we sort of see that they also um, get some sort of a li a likelihood uh, ratio performance. However, it is inferior to what we get um, when we use uh, different networks. Um, so our, our method is uh, both uh, recovers different subtypes and subtypes that are actually more predictive of survival. Um, finally, we sort of asked ourselves, um, can, can we uh, take these results as, as expression measurements are still much easier to come by than somatic mutations? Uh, can we transfer, um, using the TCGA data, our results from, from the world of somatic mutations into expression uh, um, subtypes? So we basically define the subtypes as before, um, and we used, um, and we used a, 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 a supervised learning approach now to sort of predict these subtypes using expression data. So ex the expression are now used as biomarkers, basically, um, to predict the, the subtypes that were defined using somatic mutations. Now we can apply this to a, an independent data set and sort of see how well we're performing. So first of all, um, just to, as a as sort of a measure of how, of how much this uh, actually works. We sort of uh, test this out in cross-validation. Um, here we sort of see the performance for somatic mutations, and here we see the performance um, for the expression subtypes. And we see there's a degradation of performance still above uh, what we'd get by random chance. And we are able to uh, recapitulate some of the survival difference um, within the same data set. And when we apply this to an independent data set, in this case the total um, expression cohort, we still maintain that um, separation into th uh, three of the four subtypes, where one subtype is, is sort of um, uh, lost due to a lack of patience. Um, and it does maintain the same uh, trend um, as we've seen before. Just as a comparison, this is the rerunning standard consensus clustering NMF. Um, and, and it, this results in a, what is a, a substantially different clustering that has a much less remarkable association with survival. Um, just drilling a bit into the biology, um, we could sort of define a, a subtyping of, of uh, what are the, the, the genes in the network that are different for uh, subtype one, the subtype that is, um, actually has lower survival. Um, and we see a number of things that sort of uh, are very encouraging. The first thing that sort of uh, popped into our eyes is this uh, caspase uh, pathway that, that has a, um, quite a few hits um, and is um, quite um, 
widely reported as being tied to cisplatin resistance and, and platinum drugs. Um, a second result which has been discussed here uh, today um, is this FGFR pathway. Um, it has been discussed in the context of other cancers, but there is a significant amount of work that sort of shows that the FGF pathway um, is tied to uh, platinum uh, resistance um, in, in human bladder cancer and, and here in uh, ovarian cancer, finally, in, in two recent papers. Um, so really to um, summarize, what we've um, shown is that we could use a network-based ratification to uh, recover what, what we believe are biologically relevant subtypes. Um, we believe that somatic mutation subtypes are different from those recovered for other downstream molecular phenotypes. Um, these um, subtypes can be recapitulated using gene expression as a biomarker signature, and each of these subtypes seems to have specific affected subnetworks which might explain uh, the reason why we are unable to sort of um, find these the specific genes as mutated over entire cohorts just because they are specific to a certain rare subtype of the disease. Um, so one slide summary as we go from here to here using a network, um, just that's the gist of this talk. Um, and if uh, I, I should give some acknowledgments, uh, first of all, J.P. Shen, um, who helped me extensively and is here in the crowd, uh, Janusz Dutkowski and Andy from my team, who also uh, had a lot of insights during this work, um, and of course, Trey for uh, his help and support. Thank you all. All right. L questions, Derek? That's a fascinating talk. Could you describe briefly your method for network propagation? Um, so we used, um, uh, the method is described in detail in uh, a paper by Van Uno Rao from Rodet Charan's group. Um, but very briefly, what we do is um, we basically use the uh, normalized adjacency matrix, and we start with the somatic mutation matrix, um, basically multiplying it, um, matrix multiplying it by the adjacency matrix. So. Um, uh, it's, it's the way to think about it is like a random walk model with restarts. Um, you have a parameter that sort of sets how, how far you want to propagate the signal. Thank you. Question there? Yeah, so I just wonder, um, you show that network-based grouping show correlation with clinical um, survival. I just wonder, given those known clinical feature variables, do that provide additional prediction value? Um, so. The so way we explore this approach has been in a, in a completely unsupervised manner. Um, and so we have not included any clinical phenotypes because we sort of wanted to. Um, the, I, I feel like in some sense that would sort of make it more of a supervised approach. Like using it just as a feature, uh, like we could talk, take it offline if you have specific ideas. Okay. Well, I think he was asking maybe if you did a multivariable analysis yeah. that had the clinical features and your stratification. Um, Would your stratification oh, then I misunderstood the question, I'm sorry. Um, so we do, I do have a slide somewhere at the end. Uh, we do show that the um, clinical variables like uh, uh, stage, grade, and age are actually not correlated with the subtypes that we've derived. So these are independent of these uh, variables. But, but, but given those known the clinical variables, do you add those uh, network-based grouping provide a better prediction? Um, so we have not... Uh, d done the uh, survival analysis in this way, okay. but uh, as a sort of a, a post-processing analysis, we can show that these are independent across the different subtypes. Okay. That uh, answers your question. One more question. So we have done very similar analysis based just on the gene expression, not the mutation part. What we do see is very interesting. So what we see is treatment type comes out as a confounding variable. So model works very well across platforms, across uh, different data generation laboratory and so forth. But if, uh, if we transfer it to another treatment, it has no predictive power. Have you done something similar? Um, so when you say treatment, you mean like the kind of chemotherapy these patients receive? Yes. Um, so in the case of DCGA, I think the vast majority of patients got a platinum-based treatment, so there wasn't any variability in the treatment types. Um, and so we didn't really explore that sort of analysis. Um, the, the results do transfer to the total data set. Um, I am unsure exactly what, uh, what, what were the specifics of the, the treatment they got there. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll thank the speakers again, and we will.